Welcome to this video. Today I will be going over some basic Google Chrome maintenance that you can do to help optimize the web browser to make sure it's running at its peak efficiency and also help make sure that it is secure. Now I am doing this on a Windows 10 computer. However, if you're on Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 7, or even a Mac, the steps will be the same. Now the first thing you will want to do is come up here to the top right hand corner and click on the three little dots there to open up the menu and go all the way to the bottom to where it says help and click on about Google Chrome. This will just make sure and confirm that the web browser is up to date and it's very important to keep it up to date because you'll have the latest features as well as the latest security patches to help make sure the web browser is safe. You do want to make sure that you do get a check mark saying it is up to date. If for any reason it fails to update, what you may have to do is completely uninstall and remove Google Chrome, restart the computer, and then reinstall Google Chrome to force the update through. Down below in the notes, I will list a link as to where you can download Google Chrome off of Google's website if needed. Next, what we're going to do is go back up to the three little dots and go down to settings to get to the main settings page. And here there are some important settings that I do want to go over. Starting from the top, you do have the option to sign into Google Chrome. And this is basically an option to save your settings on the cloud. So that way, if you sign into Google Chrome on a different computer or different device, all of your settings will carry over to that device as well. You'll be able to sync everything. That is optional. You do not have to do it. Now, continuing down the list of settings, uh, the next few options will have to do with customization. We can see underneath appearance, the first option we have is themes. If you were to click on this option, it will take you to the Chrome Web Store, which is this page right here. And basically, this just allows you to pick out a theme which will change the way that Chrome looks. And so if you find one that you're interested in, you just click on it. And when it loads up, it will give you an option to add it to Chrome. You just click on that and it will change the theme to whatever you have selected. I personally like the basic look, so I'm going to leave it as is. The next option is we can have Chrome show the home button by flipping this switch. And you can now see up here on the top left hand side, there is a home button. Now we can actually change our home page if we'd like to. We just click on this bottom dot. And right here, we can type in whatever we want our home page to be. Again, you can set it to whatever you want it to be. And once you've done that, anytime you click on this home button, it will take you to whatever website you've typed in here. So for example, for, for me, I've set it to Google. If I hit the home button, it will take me to google.com. Continuing down the list, we do have an option for the bookmarks bar. I will talk about bookmarks here in a moment. But basically, if you want it to display, you just flip that switch. And for those of you who may have a disability or if things are too small on the screen inside the web browser, here you can change the font size as well as the page zoom to help make things larger and easier to see. Continuing down the list, we have an option for the search engine. Here we can manage what our uh, default search engine is set to. Right now, mine is set to Google, but you can also select one of these other options on the list. Now, if you want to improve security and privacy, you do want to take a look at using DuckDuckGo. Now, I will post a link down below in the notes to this page. But again, this is DuckDuckGo.com. It's an alternative search option, an alternative search engine, which is more secure because they do not track you, unlike Google and Bing and Yahoo and other search engines. So all you have to do to add it is just visit the website, just come right here, and then go back to settings and click on manage and let me just refresh this and now you can see DuckDuckGo appears on the list I'm just going to click on the three little dots here and I can set DuckDuckGo as my default search engine so if I hit back now we see DuckDuckGo is the default search engine but again you can use any option on this list if you prefer Google you can set it to Google I'm just going to leave mine at DuckDuckGo Continuing on right here, we have the option to make Chrome the default browser. If I click on the button here, it opens up another menu. And underneath web browser, you just have to click on the current browser. And then it gives you the option to change it to Chrome. And then you'll click on switch anyways. And now we can see Google Chrome is the default. Back here on the Chrome settings list, continuing down the page, the last section is what happens when you first open 
the Google Chrome browser, you have three different options you can select from. You can have just a new blank tab open. You can have Chrome continue where you left off. Or if you want a specific page to open up when you first open up Chrome, you just click on this dot and add in whatever website you want to open. It could be ESPN. It could be your Hotmail. It could be whatever website you want. I'm just going to leave it on a blank new tab. Now at the very bottom of this list, you'll notice there is an advanced option. If I click on that, it just extends the list. And the first section is privacy and security. Now a couple of things here. The do not track request, I would go ahead and turn that on uh, just because that will help minimize the amount of information that is tracked as you're surfing the internet. And also make sure that the option to protect you and your devices from dangerous website is turned on. If you want to increase privacy on the browser itself, you'll just want to turn off all of these options. These, however, though, can be convenient, so that's going to be up to you whether or not you want those turned on or off. So if you want to leave them turned on, that's fine. But I would not turn on any of the options that have to do with sending information to Google. I would leave all of those turned off. Uh, so make sure that those switches are gray. Additionally, there's a third option here that also has to do with sending information to Google, so make sure that one is gray as well. Now, in the past, I have recommended going to the content settings and changing some of those settings. However, Google has improved the default settings for these different categories, and so for the most part, I would just recommend leaving these as they are, set to default. However, this is where they're located in case you want to go through them. Just keep in mind, the more things you turn off, the higher your security, but you may notice that certain websites or web pages may not load correctly or function the way they're supposed to. So again, my first recommendation is just leave everything the way it is on this menu. But here it is in case you want to mess around with it. Now we will come back to the clear browsing data option, so I'm going to skip that for now. Here under password forms or password and forms is where you can manage the autofill setting or the saved passwords. So for example, when you go to a checkout page on a website and Google Chrome automatically fills in your billing or shipping address and credit card information, that is all saved right here. So if you need to delete it, update it, change it, manage it, this is where you go to do so. Same thing with your passwords. When Google Chrome fills in a password for you or any passwords that are currently saved in Google Chrome, they're all saved right here. So if you click on that option, you, you do have the option to manage them or delete them if you need to do so. Now for the most part with the rest of these, I'm not going to go over. Just keep in mind here at the very bottom, there is a reset option. So if you need to reset Google Chrome back to its defaults in case it's not running the way you need it to, this is where you find the re uh, reset option here at the very bottom. One other setting I did fail to mention is here underneath system, there is an option where if this is turned on, it will allow Google Chrome to run in the background. You actually want to turn that off because you don't want too many things running in the background on your computer. So again, turn this setting off and it will just help to optimize your computer as well. Next, I'm going to go over how to use the bookmark feature in Google Chrome. It's really easy. All you do is you go to the web page or website that you want to bookmark or save. And once you have it loaded, just come up here to the top right corner of Google Chrome and you will see that there is a star. You just click on that. You can type in whatever you want to name the bookmark. And for simplicity's sake, just leave it as bookmarks bar for the folder and click on done. You'll notice that the star is now blue, which means it is now bookmarks. Now, to get to that bookmark, all you do is you click on these three little dots, go down to where it says bookmarks bar, and right here where it says show bookmarks bar, just click on that. It's the same setting that we looked at earlier, but basically it adds this bar up here at the top right below the address bar, and you can see that ESPN is now listed up here on the top left-hand side. So anytime I want to get to this site, all I have to do is just click right there on that bookmarks and it will load the ESPN homepage that I have bookmarked. The reason why I'm going over this feature is because I've noticed a lot of people do not use the bookmark feature. Instead, they just log all of the history in their Google Chrome browser and use their cached history the way that you're supposed to actually use the bookmarks feature. And so when their history gets cleared, 
out of their browser, they can no longer access all of their websites because their history has been cleared. So use the bookmark feature, use it correctly. It's a very handy tool. Next, I'm going to come up here to the three little dots again, and we're going to go down to where it says more tools. And from here, we're actually going to click on clear browsing data. And this is exactly why I went over how to bookmark a website in Google Chrome because clearing out the data does get rid of all of the garbage out of the web browser. So you do want to make sure that you do it periodically to help keep the web browser optimized and running at its peak efficiency. Now, when you open it, you will probably have the basics tab selected. Go ahead and click on advanced. Make sure you only have just the top four boxes checked. Do not check any of these ones down here. Again, just the top four and set the time range to all time and go ahead and just click on the blue clear data uh, button and that will go ahead and clear all of the garbage out of your Google Chrome web browser. Depending on how much is in there, it may take several seconds or possibly even minutes to clear it all out. For the next step, you will want to come up to the very top right corner and click on the three little dots and go down to where it says more tools and from there click on extensions. And this is going to load up a menu or list of extensions that you have installed on your Google Chrome web browser. Please keep in mind, yes, extensions and other add-ons are fun and convenient, but they are not good for privacy. They are not good for security and safety. And so I would strongly recommend that you remove all extensions with the exception of just the default Google extensions or if you have an extension that has to do with a password keeper or password vault, you can keep that as well. But all other extensions you need to remove. I know some people have asked, well, what about an extension that has to do with my antivirus or security? For the most part, I would remove those also because they really don't provide that much more security. And usually they just end up slowing the browser down. And education does a better job than any of those extensions ever will do. So again, I would strongly recommend to increase privacy and security and even performance, remove all extensions off of Google Chrome with the exception of just the default Google Chrome extensions, which are the docs, the Google Chrome docs offline sheets and slides. Those four you can keep. And if you also have an extension that has to do with a password keeper or password vault, you can keep that one as well. But all other extensions must go. So what you'll do is you'll come up here to the very top first, just check this little box and click on update extensions. Now that will just make sure that all of the extensions are up to date for security reasons. And then go down the list. When you find one that needs to be removed, you just uncheck the box to disable it and then click on the trash can to remove it. And again, it doesn't matter if it's from a company like Pinterest or any other legitimate company it needs to go because it is a security and performance risk and it is a risk to pr uh, privacy. So again, please just get rid of them, especially if you see one with the name toolbar in it, get rid of that as well. That's everything for this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please post them down below in the comment section and I will respond as quickly as possible. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video.